So welcome everybody to this short talk from EBD um, with the title Moving from 2D to 3D with Advanced Tools from EBD. My name is Elias Horn. I am the product manager for the EBD Labware. And in the beginning, I want to give you a brief overview of what you can expect in the next 10 minutes. So first, a short introduction into the field 2D to 3D. Then I will show you a nice uh, collagen gel matrix for 3D cell culture. I will give you some ideas for imaging chambers for those uh, gels. And in the last part, I will give you a quick outlook. Um, I will show you some EBD innovations, what you can expect in the future. Um, all this is coming out of the EBD toolbox. As you know, uh, EBD is a uh, supplier for cell culture and microscopy assays like chemotaxis, uh, tube formation, flow systems with the pump and perfusion, but also imaging dishes, imaging chambers for immunofluorescent stainings and so on. And also inside this toolbox, we have a lot, uh, yeah, we have some products or a lot of products um, for three-dimensional cell culture, which you can use to go one step from 2D to 3D. And um, just as a, as a quick introduction here, um, from a typical two-dimensional cell monolayer towards living tissue in 3D, um, it's a quite a long step. Um, but a lot of people want to do um, more physiological relevant experiments, want to have uh, the the more uh, want to have uh, more microenvironment in the in the living tissues, um, more cell types, more structure, more relevance, and but also more complexity, of course, um, in the assays. Um, at the same time, a cell monolayer or cell monolayer assays um, are very nice for access. There are a lot of biochemical tools, um, a lot of biochemical assays, um, and one step towards three D and the first and easiest step is working with a hydrogel um, in which the cells, the single cells, are surrounded by a three-dimensional uh, matrix. Um, this is what I will show you uh, right now. Um, the next step towards living tissue in, in 3D is working with uh, spheroids in which the cells or organoids, in which the cells itself um, build up a three-dimensional structure um, with uh, even more relevance, with even more functionality. But first, let's uh, stick with the first step, with the hydrogel step. And in this, um, yeah, very nice um, uh, system, um, what we have is uh, a collagen gel, a very nice collagen gel. And instead of having the cells on a two-dimensional surface, we can easily mix the cells with this collagen gel into a three-dimensional matrix. And in, under the microscope, instead of having the cell flatly attached on the 2D surface, it is surrounded by the gel, in this case, the, the collagen gel. And you can even see the gel fibers here. So the cell is uh, having a totally different morphology in most cases. Um, and uh, this is very nice and this is very easy to use, especially, uh, or in this case, the collagen gels. Uh, very easy to use, very cost effective. Um, collagen has a very defined composition. Um, it's very flexible in use. So um, concentration wise, uh, growth factor wise, um, and also chemokine, you can add anything you want into the collagen. Um, so create, create your own, um, yeah. Uh, composition of the collagen matrix. At the same time, the optical quality is uh, really excellent. So we have a lot of, uh, we have perfect access for fluorescence microscopy, for confocal microscopy, and so on. Um, and it's very easy to do. And this is just an example protocol here, or an example how to do th that. We have uh, very detailed um, protocols on the web page, very detailed instructions. Um, all you need is your uh, cells and suspension. You need a, you need the collagen in solution, uh, water, cell culture water, um, sodium hydroxide. You can add supplements if you want, and you need a 10x medium of your choice. 
you mix all together and you end up with a very nice collagen gel, which people of course normally use in, a, uh, in an open well, like in a 96 well plate, in an, in an open imaging chamber. Um, if you do that, you will quickly realize that you create a gel meniscus um, with, this, with a gel cell mix here. Um, and you will have a lot of cells near the edges. You will have much less cells in the center. So the cell distribution is not homogeneous. Also the gel distribution is not homogeneous. So overall, the conditions are not really perfect for um, a longer culture or a, a, a defined culture. So this is why uh, we invented this so-called well in a well technology in which we have an open well um, with a very small step here. And you can even see the step in the slide. So this is the well, and this is a small step here. And this step creates an inner well with exactly, exactly 10 microliters of uh, gel matrix. And if you use exactly this volume, you create a very flat surface. So uh, a very homogeneous cell distribution without this gel meniscus. Um, with the cover slip bottom we have here, we can uh, access microscopy very nicely, fluorescence microscopy. So the imaging readout is, is really easy. Um, and this example of uh, HT1080 human uh, fibrosarcoma cells uh, in green and the collagen gel or the collagen gel fibers in this case uh, in, in, in white. It's a very nice example for this uh, fibrous three-dimensional network. Um, and you can nicely see how the cells are active, how the cells uh, are dividing, how the cells are migrating um, in this soft and flexible gel matrix. Um, so the collagen gel is a very uh, nice and easy tool, uh, very similar to the native tissue extracellular matrix, and it's a very easy first step um, for a three-dimensional assay. Um, as I've shown before, the next logical step for 3D assays um, for 3D cell culture is using spheroids and organoids. And this is what I want to show you now in a, in a brief outlook. Um, and just a little bit of our motivation because we have uh, done um, uh, spheroid assays um, in our lab, in our EBD lab uh, yeah, for a very long time. Uh, but we were never satisfied with the imaging quality in those plates, uh, with the localization of the spheroids. They were never perfectly where we want them to be for imaging. And we were also not very satisfied with the environment. Uh, and with environment here, I mean uh, being able to conduct a medium exchange, being able to um, connect a pump system for a perfusion of the spheroids and so on. So we came up with the combination of uh, micro patterning and a spheroid culture in which we just use a um, passivated surface, our bioinert surf surface. We create adhesive spots with uh, ECM um, so this can very easily catch uh, spheroids, also single cells, which then will form spheroids on this surface. Um, and with this technology, we can easily have defined positions for the spheroids. We can uh, um, apply long-term shear stress if we want uh, perfusion, medium exchange automatically. Um, if we do that in a channel slide, um, as, 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 as it, it, it is shown here. And with this perfusion, we can easily deliver nutrients, uh, collect supernatants, harvest the spheroids, and so on. And at the same time, with this bionet surface, we have access to high resolution microscopy, um, which you can see here very nice uh, confocal images um, of the spheroids, very high resolution. Um, so basically, uh, that is a super nice uh, system in the future, um, fulfilling all those needs for imaging quality, for perfect localization, um, and for environment uh, or environmental uh, conditions. And um, I hope this will be available soon. Um, stay in touch with EBD um, to get this. And uh, this is basically the end of this short talk. My uh, 
last slide here is uh, just a motivational slide. So please get started. The first step into 3D is very easy with a collagen, with a collagen, with a well in a well um, um, a slide and well in a well uh, imaging chamber. So thank you very much for your attention and um, have a nice day. <laughs>